My question is around the cultural areas that we'd be looking for, uh, I guess, to adopt. So are we looking, when I go to a lot of conferences, you hear about looking at the U.S. and how the U.S. is going to leapfrog the Canadian healthcare system through technology and innovation and procurement. We look at the stuff that's going on in Europe, but I don't know how many of us actually know in depth what's happening in Europe, but the cultural model of Europe seems to fit more with the cultural identity of Canadians. What do you see as being kind of where we should be talking about our goal as a country and which areas should we be looking at? I, I think that uh, just looking at the, the landscape of healthcare, you know, one of the biggest issues, and, and you've heard about the patient's first strategy in, in Ontario, is really focusing on chronic disease and really the gap that exists between acute care and, and home care. So, uh, you know, that's an area I think that's very fertile for digital health. And that's an area where there is a significant gap with other jurisdictions. So, you know, you could be talking about diabetes or hypertension or, or uh, mental health, et cetera. So I think, I think that's a, a one example. Another one that I gave is, is about personalized medicine, which is just recognizing the genetic differences between patients and how that plays a role in, in prescribing uh, drugs for them for effectiveness. Bill? Yeah, I would, um, I think, again, having spent three and a half years working in London and, and the job being understanding the integrated health systems around the world, um, I think what sits at, your, at the heart of your question is understanding that the best practices often lie elsewhere. And so I think the moment you, have, you think you have the monopoly on good ideas, you're sunk. So um, again, I'm excited by the role and the vision that created it and the fact that they put somebody like me in it because they, they, the ministry, the deputy minister, the minister, the government want ideas brought in from abroad. The challenge, and you really put your finger on it, is best practices don't necessarily mean that they're applicable to your jurisdiction because they could be the perfect thing in Germany or in the US and, you know, and end up bankrupting the Ontario fee-for-service system. So you have to be very careful about the applying models. Um, uh, but I, I do think that um, uh, I, one thing I've learned in this role is uh, I've always thought cost-effectiveness was an important uh, uh, role or feature of any new technology. So I've, I've always believed that. Um, I've been a bit surprised at technologies that are in, because I didn't really know the device industry before I took this over, um, the technologies that are in the system that actually aren't cost effective, and I won't get into that. Um, I'll leave that to others who know more about it than me. But it's actually quite interesting that in a relationship-based procurement model, which is often um, emotional sometimes, like sometimes it's even a recruiting tool, like you know, a very important practitioner is being recruited by three other places in the US or Western Europe, and, and he or she wants a particular technology, and the foundation thinks it's really sexy, and so it gets procured. Um, it may not be cost effective, and that's interesting to me because they sh these technologies should be cost effective. And I think that <clears throat> the profit based, purely profit based model relying a lot on private money probably <clears throat> tends towards, uh, well, I know it sometimes will procure things that aren't cost effective. And so we don't, we don't want to go down that road and can't go down that road. And so uh, I also know that exam there are many examples, and Denmark was one of them, other Scandinavian countries, Germany, where there, in, in Europe there's a particular uh, effort to combine the economic and the political and the policymaking functionality so that you get, you can achieve multiple, it's social enterprise, right? Like you can achieve multiple objectives at the same time. They seem to be less afraid of this notion that you can make money at something and also deliver the social good in the way that you should as the government. And so I'm in, I'm, I think that in the healthcare model, there are lots of examples that we could use from both. Thank you. Uh, one, one here. We could bring the other microphone. No, no, I think I think we've got it. Is that better? All right. um, my question is around uh, the queue of medical devices for approval right now, and I wondered if you could comment on how many are in the queue for approval, and how you're going to streamline those processes 
with a particular uh, discussion of OTAC and HQO and how those two groups work together and uh, maybe your, a quick prognosis on how we're going to fix that and what timeline we're going to fix that. Yeah. You are referring to, to the queue for reimbursement or health yeah. technology assessment or rather than regulatory. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so that would be how, yeah. how many are currently in the MARSIC site queue, how many are currently in the uh, OTAC queue. It's, it's probably, you know, tens rather than hundreds, yeah. right? So, um, so I don't know that, I'll just be honest, I don't know the numbers for sure. I thought you were talking about safety approval. Um, Did you say about 200? About 200? Yeah, so I was good. Yeah, so I would say tens, not hundreds, right? Uh, I don't have the exact numbers. I think that, um, so, so I, one of the, I keep saying smart, hardworking, passionate people in healthcare, it's so important, and, and we've got them. We've got them at Mars Excite, we've got them at HQO, OTAC. Uh, I like to think I'm one of them. Uh, we've got them at the ministry, and so one of the um, exciting things about that piece of work I described at the end <clears throat> is people have all, sorry, <clears throat> people have all signed up for building a model that achieves those value propositions that I described. So the, the answer to how we're going to get there um, is we have, you know, we are literally designing a process as we speak. We had a meeting on well, Thursday, we're going to have another one this week that has the Ministry of Ontario with its partners, so Mars Excite, HKO, OTAC, um, and, and others looking at how to actually achieve the value proposition. So, look, I, I don't think it's a secret to say that Mars Excite has spent a lot of time and, and is only going to have its first product come through in 2016, and there's only one or two more in 2017. So I don't think anyone's particularly happy with that. I don't think even the folks who are working on it. Uh, but, but, but that is what it is, right? And I'm a firm believer in that. Like, we are where we are. Okay, so now where do we go next? And the part that excites me is those folks, as well as, you know, Josh Tupper and Irfan Dalla and the ministry, the ministry, right, the ministry leaders are all looking to work together to build that process. So by the end of this year, I hope that we'll be able to describe a general process for those companies that go into Mars Excite and, uh, and as I say, hope to come out the other end. And I also know that at HQO and OTAC, they themselves are talking about how do we prior, how do we get a list of prioritizations in front of everyone so that we actually are identifying the types of technologies that we want to see instead of just kind of waiting to take on all comers. Um, like what could be a better process for, for identifying the companies that we want to look at, getting those technologies assessed in a more timely manner and having them come out the other end with, uh, you know, with crispness such that the ultimate goal is achieved, namely, cost-effectiveness assessment and, uh, and ultimate penetration in, in the market. Uh, Bill, I just had a, a comment because I, I mentioned in my opening remarks that, that uh, you know, as an industry, we go through the HTA process, whether it's, uh, it's now with Mars Excite, but, but uh, more traditionally with IRFAN's group at Health Quality Ontario. Uh, and, and what we find is that, um, you know, no means no for good reasons. You don't have the right evidence. You don't have the right economics that we can all accept that. But yes often uh, is a very complex answer uh, which may not result in anything. In fact, uh, I mean, we, uh, uh, you know, I'm not speaking out of school here and saying that, that we've had some things go through the OTAC process, you know, a decade ago that still have not been applied uh, or scaled and spread. So. How do you plan to address sort of the second half of the process after you've gathered the appropriate sort of evidentiary package? Yeah. How do you apply it? So, that, so that's a great question. Um, and uh, it's gonna, I honestly think it's going to come down to some form of prioritization up front and some form of agreement by those bodies I've described that if you hit the milestones that are set out in the health technology assessment or other review, that you'll get into the marketplace. But what's missing right now, and I realized this early on, yeah. um, unfortunately after I took the job, is that there's no, set, there's no way to set priorities. So what's happening is you've got funnels at the top of HQO OTAC and at the top of Excite, and companies are going in, but there's no process right now by which they get into the market. So that's as Neil said. The, I think the biggest issue for that is when it comes out the other end, because the ministry hasn't been involved in the way that it, it needs to be involved to get an answer to this, 
uh, and I'm not being critical, it just, I mean, it just is. Um, y you don't, they, they, it, uh, they only have a certain amount of dollars, and there's an opportunity cost to every dollar spent. So if a product comes through that is not anywhere near the priority list of the Ministry of Health, you can imagine that if you're the funding agent, the ministry, you kind of go, well, wait a sec. So I spend, you know, whatever the number is, $5 million getting that product into the system, or $5 million keeping Hamilton Health Sciences going for a week. I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough situation. It's not intractable. It goes back to what I said at the beginning. I think it all spins on prioritization. Somehow we need to get, and we're gonna work on this this year, it, we need to have a system. You, you can't exhaustively define technology. So to be clear, I'm not talking about that, because if you put a list of technologies you're looking for together, all you know is you're gonna be out of date the next day. So I'm not talking about that. But it has to be a list of priority areas with, some, with sufficient specificity so that it actually helps the funding decision at the back end. And that's the tricky part. So you could do, you could do home and community care, you could do mental health, you could do Aboriginal. That's not enough to decide, to, to allow you to know in advance that you're gonna fund a product comes out of the other end. But what, there is a level of specificity there. And I know that HQO and OTAC, they're looking at the quality improvement plans that come from hospitals, for example. So now you've got people on the ground who are telling us what are important to them. Sounds like a pretty interesting place to at least start if you're looking to identify with some detail and specificity what priorities might be for the ministry such that they'd fund a product that was addressing that priority coming out of the bottom of the funnel. It's not easy. If it were, I wouldn't have this job. Um, but I do, th I do think there's something there. I think, I think you know, there is a real possibility that if we can get the prioritizations right with that level of specificity, that we'll be able to ensure penetration of these products coming through. I, I uh, have to bring us to a close. I, I think that uh, um, to say this isn't easy, but I think we're blessed to have uh, both Neil Fraser and Bill Charnetsky working on these issues. And I'd ask you to uh, show your appreciation for their uh, presentation. <laughs> <laughs>